Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Computers Client Build 6 Part 2. This part of the build log is going to be focused mainly on the case mods. In the first part of the build log I covered most of the components, but I said there were still some components to arrive. So I'm going to start this part of the build log by covering those components. Then I'm going to get stuck into the case mods. Okay, the 240mm radiator has now arrived. This is another Black Ice GTS radiator, just like I gave you a look at in part 1. So check out part 1 of this build log if you want the details. You can see the 280mm radiator here that I'm using in the roof of the case and the 240mm radiator that I'm using in the front of the case. And you can see that the size difference between them is quite substantial. Now, as I mentioned in part one, I'm going to use an OCZ Vertex 4 128GB SSD as the boot drive. As the storage drive, I'm using a Western Digital Blue 1TB 2.5-inch hard drive. And the reason I'm using 2.5-inch drives is because of the position that I'm mounting them in in the build. So you'll see that later in the build log. Now, I meant to mention that the shroud that I'm using in the build is a coolant's 280mm shroud. So I'll just give you a close look. It's a great modification. It's very easy to do and you know it adds an extra 25 to 30 millimeters of clearance in the top of your case. Often it can mean installing a radiator in cases that you know aren't compatible with radiators. So the angular outside piece here is actually plastic and the rest of it is aluminium and it's brushed aluminium so it has a nice finish. So on top you can put grills of any kind as long as they fit so two 140 millimeter grills. It has eight mounting holes around the outside to mount the shroud to the case and then it obviously has the mounting holes for the fans and radiator. Okay, the power supply has also arrived and as you can see I'm using the Corsair HX650. Now I've used this in a number of builds before and I'm sure a lot of you have seen this power supply by now so I won't go into too much detail. Just a quick look at the basic specifications. So 650 watts in total, 624 watts on the 12 volt rail and 52 amps. Now the cables that are hardwired is the 24 pin motherboard power and the 8 pin EPS which you can split into two 4 pin ATX. So just a quick look at the modular connectors. Now for modular cables we have two 6 pin PCIe power cables, each has a 6 pin and 6 plus 2 pin PCIe power connector. There is 8 4 pin Molex connectors on two cables. Each has a 4 pin floppy power connector as well. And there is 9 SATA power connectors on three cables. None of these are sleeved but they can still be very clean looking in a build because they are the flat cables instead of being round. These cables are sleeved as you can see and the sleeving is certainly not the greatest. It, you can see through it. It's not very dense. The heat shrink is decent. You know, it's certainly not the worst sleeving that I've seen. Now, the reason I didn't go for the HX650 V2 is because it's actually 50 millimeters longer than this power supply. This power supply is 150 millimeters long. You're fairly restricted with power supply size in the Bitfenix Prodigy, you really can't go over 50 millimeters. I have actually fit a 160 millimeter power supply into this case, but it was very tight. So version two of the HX650 would have brought a number of benefits. This power supply is bronze rated. Version two is actually gold rated, and also you know with the the fan curve. It's a lot quieter, definitely about a power supply, but there's just no way it would have fit in this case. So you can see here the sleeving that I'm going to be probably using. This is actually paracord, so it fits my color scheme nicely. It's a nice blue, but 
Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to use it yet. I'll, I'll just see how it looks, how it goes. The great thing about paracord is that you don't need any heat shrink. Okay, it's now time for me to get stuck into the case mods. I'm going to explain exactly what I did to the case in detail, as always. I'm going to assume that you are familiar with this case. It's going to be a lot easier to follow these modifications if you are. So if you're not, go back and check out my review on the BitPhoenix Prodigy. I'll put a link on the screen. I actually got a bit carried away with these mods. I had a lot of fun with this case. So I did not end up filming as much of it as I would have liked. But don't worry, you're not going to miss a thing. I'll still go back and explain every single step. Now, if you're planning on installing a water cooling system into this case, you need to at least remove the 5.25 inch bay and maybe the two hard drive cages. It's just a matter of undoing a number of screws. These components are really easy to remove and you can see how much more space this gives you for installing radiators and other water cooling components. Now, I have modifications in mind to enhance both performance and aesthetics. I'm planning on modifying both the side panels, top panel and front panel, and I'm also planning on painting some of the case panels. Now I did almost all of this modding just with a Dremel. I also needed to drill a number of holes, so for that I used a cordless drill. Other than that, for materials I just used a bit of plexi and a few cans of paint, so really low cost. I did put a lot of time into it though. but. With all the proper tools, it would be the hell of a lot quicker and a lot easier. But it can certainly be done with basic tools. Now I'm not going to do guides on using a Dremel, painting, anything like that. In the future I will do a modding guide where I you know, teach you how to do things like that. But in this build log I'm just going to focus on exactly what I did to the case. Okay, the first thing I wanted to do was add more ventilation to the front panel. The black version and white version of the Bitfenix Prodigy actually have different front panels. The black version has ventilation right across the front panel. The white version only has ventilation around the outside, as you can see. Now, because I'm installing a 240mm radiator directly behind this front panel, that is definitely not enough ventilation in my opinion. I wanted direct ventilation to the radiator so that there's minimal turbulence, the air just goes straight through the radiator. Now, I had a lot of different ideas to work with this front panel. My original idea was to still use the existing front panel, but then I had trouble with the where the 5.25 inch bay cutout is. It, nothing really worked that I could think of. So I thought, okay, scrap that, I will remove this white front panel. Now originally this black panel actually went right across underneath this panel and this panel was just a cover for it, it was connected to it, you can see the threads here. So I just undid that, then what I did was cut out the, the entire middle of the black panel because that was a sealed panel, no ventilation through it except for these little holes around the outside. Now this cut had to be absolutely perfect because it's in full view. A lot of cuts when you're modding you can hide such as this one. It's going to be completely hidden so I don't really have to worry about that cut. But this cut is going to be in full view. Not only that, the replacement panel that I put in here needs to butt up against that. So if there's, if there's any curves or waves in either of those cuts, you're going to see gaps in between them. You can see that I've left a very thin panel there. And any waves you'd easily be able to see it, you know, it'd go out into the ventilation here, so. Now, the remaining black strip that I've left around the outside of the front panel clips to the case with four clips, so that works out nicely. So the next thing I needed to do was cut a panel to fit inside of this black strip. And I decided to use smoked plexi. So as you can see, I've also cut a piece out of the honeycomb in the front panel of the case. And I've gone around and left behind the radiator mounting holes. Now the reason I did this was to improve airflow and also improve aesthetics because I'm planning on using a radiator grill. Now this is a Phobia 240mm radiator grill and there's no point in having two panels, it's only going to look terrible and restrict airflow. 
So I cut everything out from behind that and you know I left behind the radiator mounting holes to increase the strength of the configuration. So here's the plexi panel. It fits very tightly into that outer black strip and that's because I managed to get those cuts very straight which I was really happy about. And as you can see I have cut out the ventilation hole in the middle of the plexi. So all you'll be able to see in the middle is the radiator grill and then behind it the radiator. So I've left the radiator mounting holes in the plexi because that is how the plexi will be fixed to the case. So it's actually a really strong configuration because the mounting bolts are going to go through the radiator grill, then the plexi, then the case panel and then into the radiator. So it's all going to be held together. And the cuts in the you know the steel case panel and also the plexi don't matter because they're completely hidden behind the radiator grill and sandwiched between the radiator and the grill. So they're out of sight. It's only those outer cuts that I've already mentioned that really matter. Now what I've decided to do with the painting, I'm going to paint the outer black strip blue. I'm going to paint the back of the smoke plexi black and I think that's going to look awesome. I'm going to paint the radiator grill white. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how all of this is going to turn out. I think it's going to fit in with the color scheme perfectly. All right, the top panel. So what I decided to do to the roof of the case is a very simple modification. I decided to install a shroud, a 280 millimeter shroud because what I thought is if I'm going to go to the trouble of installing a shroud, I might as well increase the radiator capacity at the same time. So a shroud comes with a number of benefits. I wanted to install it for aesthetics mainly because I think a shroud on the top of this case just looks awesome. It also gives another 25 to 30 millimeters of clearance inside the case and as I said, it has allowed for an increase in radiator capacity. So that there is the original panel from the top of the case for a 240 millimeter radiator that this case can fit by default in the roof. So all I've done is gone around the outside of that and cut it out. So basically I just traced around the inside of the shroud and then I just had to drill eight holes to mount the shroud. So the fans actually go inside the shroud, the radiator fits below it. And a 280 millimeter shroud actually fits on top of this case perfectly. It's within a millimeter. So it worked out really well. So besides the painting that I've already mentioned I'm going to do to the front panel, I'm going to paint the case feet at the top and bottom of the case blue. Now for what I have in mind for the side panels. As you can see, I've already installed a side panel window into the front side panel, but I'm not yet sure if I'm going to go with this. What I'm going to do is completely finish the build, then I'll decide what it is about the build that I want to show off, that I want to be able to see through the side panel windows. What I will probably end up doing is installing two massive side panel windows in both the front side panel and rear side panel. Either way, I'm going to show you how to install a side panel window in a future part of this build log, so I'll give you all of the details. Okay, as you can see, I have now finished most of the painting. It's actually been four days since I last filmed, and in that time I've been focusing solely on the painting. It's certainly been a lot of work, but it's definitely paid off. This is exactly what I had in mind for the case. It's all just worked out perfectly, and I'm really happy with it. So I'm actually halfway through painting the final panel. I've got about another probably day of painting on that, and then 48 hours for it to dry. These panels aren't actually fully dry yet, so I've just sat them into position to give you an idea of what the case is going to look like when it's finished. So you can see the outer strip that was black is now blue and I'm really happy that I went blue then black then white. I think that looks great. Now the plexi has just turned out perfectly. I painted the back of it black. It already had a fairly dark smoke to it. So it's gone a really deep black and it has a high gloss mirror finish with a 
you know, a little bit of transparency. You can actually see through it to the paint on the other side. I think the, you know, it's a perfect effect. So I'm definitely happy with that. So you can see the radiator grill is now white. It was black. I think the radiator grill is going to work even better once the radiator is installed because it's going to act like a very small white accent because it's going to have black right across behind it. The plexi is black and then the radiator is also black. So I think that's going to look awesome. Now the three plastic case panels that I painted blue were difficult to paint and that's because painting plastics can always be a little bit difficult but these were the Bitfenix soft touch material. It re required a lot of surface preparation and I used a special paint designed for plastics but it really didn't want to take. I had to dust the coats on really lightly so I ended up doing a lot of coats. It took a lot longer than I thought but it turned out really well and I'm confident that this paint job is going to last a long time. Even considering that this is going to be a land build, it's definitely going to get knocked around. Mainly the case feet, I mean the lower case feet are going to be constantly coming in contact with all kinds of different surfaces. So I put in a lot of effort to make sure that this paint job was really strong and sturdy. I also put a fair bit of time into matching up the finishes on all of the painting that I did with the existing paint already on the case. And it's kind of an orange peel finish. It's slightly pitted. It certainly doesn't feel rough though. I guess it's a satin type finish. The camera's actually picking it up really well just there. That is exactly the finish that I went for. Now you might see a few particles underneath the paint here and there and that's because I'm definitely not working in a spray booth or anything like that. I'm actually just working in my garage. Overall I'm definitely happy with the way it's turned out. I think it's going to look amazing once the case is fully assembled. Alright, something else I did, I went around and touched up the paint around all of my cuts even though they're going to be out of sight. Because this is a steel case, it could rust over time. It's definitely something you need to remember to do when modding. So you've probably already noticed that I have managed to get the coolant color and the color of the blue paint almost perfectly matched. The color of the blue paint is actually slightly darker than the color of the coolant. All I need to do to fix this is add a little bit more blue dye to the coolant and I should be able to get it absolutely perfect. So as I mentioned in the previous part of the build log, the coolant is Mayhem's Pastel Ice White with Mayhem's Blue and Mayhem's Clear UV Blue dyes. Now I'm going to have to leave this part of the build log here. It turns out I actually assembled the case and installed the radiators, but I have to make one final cut. So I had to pull the radiators out, completely disassemble the case just to do that cut. So it's held me up a little bit. In the next part of the build log, I will have finished all of the modifications and the painting. So I'll be able to show you the fully assembled case and then it will be time to install the water blocks and start installing hardware. That sums up this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like and favorite if you want to see more.